What? I don't know. I was trying to think of something funny to do. I'm not as funny as Scott. I think you're you're fun funnier. I just I don't measure up. <laughs> you need to take your thoughts captive right now. <laughs> we'll be right back. Well, good morning. Welcome to Wake Up. Where we wake up. I'm Pastor Jason. I'm Pastor Kelly. <laughs> and this is it. This is our Tuesday. Now, uh, tomorrow, Pastor Scott's back in town. So yes, we're really I'm cherishing sure this moment. I'm sure everybody's really happy. No, they are. Uh, no, wait, happy. No. <laughs> that, didn't, that, didn't, that didn't come out right. We're happy to have you. Yeah, you're so fun to do this with, Kelly. You, uh, <laughs> I thought you were talking to me. <laughs> I heard the sarcasm. <laughs> Uh, welcome to Wake Up, where we... We already did that. Wake we, Up. No, I don't think we did. Yes, I said I'm Pastor Kelly. Oh, okay. Deja where we vu. wake up. Wake up. If you're a new subscriber, type in where you're from. Yes. We, we like to um, share that on Wednesdays, and then uh, like and subscribe. That's right. Okay, so our scripture for today is Hebrews 4 and verse 12. Yes. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. Now the word of God is living and it is active. And what is it living and active to do? It's living and active to bring healing and to bring deliverance in our lives. But the catch here is that we have to receive it as truth and we have to speak it as truth. We have to believe the word that is spoken, whether you hear it in a song, you hear it preached, or you open up your Bible and simply read it. You have to, re you, the Holy Spirit goes, ooh, I like that. I like that thing about, you, you don't have to have a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. And it becomes, and it activates in your life. You go, oh, that's mine. And, and you receive it as truth, and you begin to walk it out as truth, to speak it as truth. And I'm reminded of the story also of the Roman uh, commander yeah. who, who went to Jesus. Yeah. Um, Matthew chapter 8. In Matthew chapter 8. You want to talk about? Sure. Uh, the story was, uh, he, he comes to Jesus, and it says uh, in chapter 8 and verse 8, um, or verse five, uh, he was pleading with Christ, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. Yep. Of course he would, he's Jesus. He's like, I got, I got you, yes. man. Yeah. And then the centurion answers, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. And uh, so he's saying, just say it. Like, I, he's like, I get you. He called him Lord, which is, you know, the Greek That's word that he good. used is like literally Lord. So he somehow, this Rome, you said this uh, earlier when no one was watching, the, <laughs> that that's Roman centurion. He had a revelation. He had a revelation. Of who Jesus of was. Who, and this is what you taught about this past weekend. And one of the things that we want to realize is that about Jesus, our, our Jesus, is that he is the word. Mm-hmm. Right, the word, the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. He is the word, and so he's, his words are not dead. He said, "My my words are life, and they are spirit." Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and then his words don't. He said, "My words will never pass away, though heaven and earth may pass away. My word will never pass away." That's right. So here's something that lasts eternity, and it's living and yeah. active. It's not yeah. some dead word. It's the, the Roman centurion's like, y "You don't have to come to my house." Like, so good. You're God. <laughs> you literally <laughs> just could just say word. it. Like you created the heavens and the earth with words. Just, just, just say it. it. And my servant will be healed. Yeah. So he did. So she's like, um, okay. Okay. He, he even no pulled like No greater faith yeah. <laughs> have yeah. I seen. Seriously. Yeah. He pulled a time out. She's like, all right, time out. Like, cut. <laughs> you Who hear? are you? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> you Did you see what this guy sees? Yeah. And he is able to access something that other people weren't able to access because of how he saw Jesus. He's yeah. like, you're the word. And really today's message is about um, the power of the word of God working in your life, yes. that it's living and that it's active. It doesn't yes. just fall to the ground, but it keeps working yes. in your life. And so there's a power to speaking God's word. Because mm -hmm. why? Because you're sending Jesus into that situation. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay. he's the word. Right. And the thing is, too, is you can have a lot of knowledge, a lot of scriptures. Okay, so you can have a whole slew of scriptures about how to get free from fear, you know, over, you know, tons. But sure, you sure. know, they, it only takes one scripture so to true. make it manifest in your life, to bring healing into it, to bring victory That's into right. it. You only need to stand on one scripture. One scripture has so much power in it. Yeah. You know, what, what did Jesus do to, to create light? Let there be light. 
Like look how look how right. God does it. When right. God speaks, it just it it's living and active, and it's still it's still, it's still here. creating to to this day. Yeah, it's still here. It's still going. And so, in the same way, we want you to get a concept of this today: is is to declare God's word over your life, mm -hmm. to speak the word, send Jesus into the midst of that battle. It's it's easier sometimes just to complain. Well, look what happened to me. This is so bad. And uh, what am I going to do? You know, how am I going to change this? Right. I'm helpless. Right. And instead, what what we're saying is, no, no, you have Jesus on the inside of you, right? And give him access to your mouth and let him speak what he says, right? Mm -hmm. Say what God says into that situation. Say what God says and get God's results in your life. That's right. Because mm. that word is alive and I it's active. I just came up with that right now. That was really good. <laughs> I really liked it. And so many times in our lives, we've seen, you know, time and again in every area of life that by declaring what God says into a situation. So good. It starts to change. You know that um, even as the word is being preached from you and Pastor Scott, healing can go forth. Yeah. Like manifestation of physical healing, things can be, things can fall off of you just by the word being preached. Well, we've Think heard about, it many times, yeah. addictions falling off. It, I came it, in addicted it, and now I don't want that drug And now anymore. I don't want that. And it, it was just literally from the power of the word being spoken mm -hmm. in that service. And I'm reminded of, you told me the story of Pastor Grace yeah. in Uganda. Yeah, well, I Tell was it. just there a couple weeks ago, as you guys know, and, and uh, you know, he, he, he would get up and preach at these huge revivals. There'd be 30,000 mm -hmm. people uh, there as he's teaching God's word. I mean, he would say at the beginning of his word, he's listen, like, listen, I'm going to preach the word of God. And while the word is going forth, healings are going to take place mm -hmm. in your body. And, and uh, you're going to be delivered of witchcraft. And they deal with a lot of witchcraft there. You're going to see deliverance come in your life. And mm -hmm. so he was saying these things that were going to happen. So he was declaring God's intention. He was sending Jesus the word into the crowd, right? Mm -hmm. and, then, uh, and, and then he just would preach a message. At the end of the message, you know, he would pray over all the people real quick, just kind of like in the name of Jesus. And then he'd say, now, if you got your healing, uh, come forward. And here they come. Hundreds. You said hundreds would come? He didn't say come forward if you need prayer or come forward if you need a healing. Yes. He believed that the healing had already gone out by yes. the word. And now you, you got your healing. Now come forward and tell us about it. And they'd yeah. line up. There would be a line for the, for the microphone and they'd be carrying Christ. You know, people don't like to talk in front of people. I'm just saying they don't. Okay. Most people don't like to talk in front of people. That's a, There's 30,000 people there. I don't want well, the microphone true. to tell. Yeah. But yet they were so compelled by what had happened in their lives. You got a kid that, that was deaf since birth who yeah. now can hear. The mom's like, okay, well, I have to tell this story. <laughs> so she brings the kid up. I got That's all these awesome. people carrying their, their, they're carrying their crutches that they kind of trounce down the, the yeah. field to the front and then they made a big pile of crutches. And what's my point? My point is, is that when you go to church this weekend and that word is being preached, expect God to move in a miraculous way in your life. These things are going to happen by faith. If you are, choose to be like that Roman centurion that says, when your word is spoken, that's enough. I know that it's happening. Mm. That's the kind of faith that Jesus is calling us to. He called it the great kind of faith who can receive the things of God just by the declared word of God. And you can. Yep. Yeah. It's living and active. It's living and active. And then you can declare it into your future. Let's pray. Father God, we just declare your word into their future now in Jesus' name. We speak you, Jesus, right into uh, the battle. We speak you, Jesus, right into the, the sickness. We speak you, Jesus, right into the situation, the place where we need a breakthrough, Father God. We speak you are coming. You are the breakthrough God, and you have already gone before us to prepare that way. We stand in your victory that you have in our lives and in mind for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Watch this clip. To knowing who Christ was, I want to know everything about this Jesus because I have realized and come to know that knowing Christ is knowing the strength that he has placed in me because greater is he that is within me than he that's in the world. If I want to be an overcomer, I don't need to find out my weakness. See, a guy said this to me once. He was like, successful people need to take their time and identify their weaknesses. I was like, well, that sounds nice. That sounds like wise and persuasive words, doesn't it? But that is not biblical. I don't want to know my weaknesses. I want to be filled up with Christ's strengths. I don't want to look at what I can't do. I want to look at what he can do. I, and what can he do? Oh, come on now. He is all in all. What can he do? He can fill every void. He can flood every soul. He could mend every heart. 
He can delete every regret. He breaks every chain. He forgives every sin. He redeems every past, oh Lord Jesus. He restores every loss. He forgives every sin. He defends every attack. He defeats every foe. He moves every mountain. He heals every disease. He's the Lamb of God and He's the Lion of Judah. He's your starting line and He is your finishing line. He is the love of God. He is the Word of God. He is the gift of God. And He is the Son of God. And he stands boldly at the altar today with both arms open wide. And he says, come to me, all who thirst. Come to me, all who are weary, and I will give you rest. Who is this man, Jesus? Like, share, subscribe. And if you're a new subscriber, type in where you're from. We love to read that on Wednesdays. And, uh, well, we're going to miss you. I'm going to miss you, too. You should do the Saturday thing with Pastor Holly. Do Saturday wake-ups. I think it's gonna happen. It's just maybe a few months away. Yep. Or days. <laughs>